Hello everyone and welcome to Plot Twists. So today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up. I managed to read five full books and four short stories. Um, I listened to one audiobook. I read four physical books um, and I e-read um, four short stories. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. So the first book that I finished in December was Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. This story centers around our main character, uh, Madeline or Maddie, and she has a um, very serious illness that um, makes her highly susceptible to outside germs. Um, as a result, she has basically lived her entire life inside the confines of her house. Um, one day there's a family that moves in next door and her room faces the same room that the um, son in the family has um, and they start to form a relationship. Um, without giving away anything about the book, the ending to this book was, was kind of mind-blowing. Um, I would say overall this was a four-star read. Um, the beginning of it was quite slow and the main character's perspective because she's been in her house as realistic but also a lot more juvenile than I was necessarily expecting given that she's 16 or maybe older. I can't quite remember. Um, but because of how good the ending was and how unexpected the plot twist was and it, that I didn't see coming at all, um, overall I gave it four stars. The next book that I read this month was Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. This is the second book in the Simon Snow trilogy. And this is another book that had a really, really slow start. Um, by the end of it, once it's, let me put it this way, once it actually started, I really enjoyed the rest of the book, but it had a really slow start to it. So overall, I gave this a four star read as well. I did not enjoy this as much as Carry On, but I am still excited to read the third book, which I believe comes out later this year. So hope to enjoy that. The next book that I read this month was In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I read this as part of the Spellbound book book club, um, which is done by Maddie at Books with Maddie and Morgan from Morgan's Chaotic World, which I will link down below. Overall, I gave it four stars out of five. Um, our main character, May, I feel like grows more over the course of this book than perhaps any character that I've read about in a 300-ish page book. Um, I also really enjoy the way this book handled the Groundhog's Day effect. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, this book is centers around our main character, May, who um, basically goes on this family vacation every year with a group of families that um, her parents were best friends with in college. And at the end of this week, she, at the end of the first week, she's done something that she's really embarrassed by and wishes she hasn't. And she's given the opportunity to go back to the beginning and kind of fix it and make it right. Um, and I think because of that, she is more outgoing, willing to try things, less afraid than she typically is. Um, and that's conveyed really well throughout this book. Um, there were some, some points that, you know, were a little cheesy or expected and that's why I gave it four stars instead of five but overall it was still a really enjoyable Christmas read and if you haven't picked it up I would highly recommend it. The next book that I picked up this month was Hope Never Dies by Andrew Schaefer. Um, this is an Obama Biden mystery. Basically this book takes place um, in 2018, a couple years after the 2016 election, and um, Joe Biden is trying to come to terms with the fact that he's no longer in the White House and um, that Barack Obama is off having all these crazy adventures and he is sitting at home. Um, 
so when there is a uh, death of a family friend, he kind of um, decides to investigate it more. And what they what he finds is that there's more to the story than what um, the police would like you to believe. Um, and this results in he and Barack Obama teaming up to kind of solve this mystery. Um, the way these two characters are written is exactly how I would expect them to be. I, I don't, obviously, I don't know either of them in real person. Obviously, I don't know either of them in real life, but um, the way they're written is really enjoyable to read regardless, and I think it's true to character. Um, this was a fairly good book. I also rated this four out of five stars. And the reason I rated it four out of five stars, um, is honestly only due to personal preference. I realized over the course of this, or reminded myself really, I don't really enjoy mysteries. Um, I don't know if it's just the format they're written or what, um, but that was my only qualm with this. I think if you are somebody that enjoys mysteries, you will really enjoy this book, and I highly recommend it. Okay, next I want to talk about the four short stories that I read this month. Um, Amazon Prime has a series of Kindle short stories that are all fairy tale retellings by popular YA authors. Um, the first of which was from Rainbow Rowell, and that's kind of what drew me into these. So I read four out of the five this month, um, and I just want to give you a brief summary of each one. I honestly would really recommend you pick them up. They were, I mean, they're fairly short. They're like 25 to 40 pages, but the concepts are interesting, and the fairy tale hints on a uh, modern YA twists were really, really enjoyable. So the one that's written by Rainbow Rowell is called The Prince and the Troll. Um, and this centers around two characters, um, the prince, who continuously brings um, Starbucks coffees to this troll that lives under the bridge. Um, and it's it very much reads like a Rainbow Rowell romance. Um, their interactions are believable. Um, the things that it references you can connect with. Overall, I really enjoyed it. The second one that I read was called Hazel and Gray by Nick Stone. This is a um, Hansel and Gretel type retelling. Um, I will, I do want to put a trigger warning on this one. There definitely are some um, rape references in this and the The story is relatively dark, um, but overall it was really good. It, it's probably the best of the ones that I've read so far. The third book that I read was called The Cleaners by Ken Liu. And in this particular story, um, it centers around the idea of memory cleaning and the idea that objects can hold memories um, or feelings for certain people. Um, this centers around one of the cleaners in this world um, who basically doesn't remember things, which is a kind of interesting uh, plot twist. Um, and then it also centers around these two sisters um, and their abilities to recall memories. Um, overall, I, I really enjoyed this and I would recommend that as well. The next one that I read was The Wicked's by Gail Foreman. This centers around um, Cinderella's evil stepmother, um, the queen from Snow White, and Mother Gothel from Tangled, and Mother Gothel from Rapunzel. Um, and this basically centers around them trying to get revenge on their um, daughters. And so they kind of team up to do this. And what they find in the end of this <laughs> is hysterical. The ending to this was amazing. Um, I would recommend this one as well. Overall, um, I gave most of the, the series is called The Faraways, and I gave most of them four stars except for the Hazel and Gray story, which I told you was my favorite. Um, overall, they were really good, and I would recommend picking them up and, and trying them.
And the last book that I'm going to talk about in December, I technically finished January 1st, but I need to talk about this book now. So we're going to add it to the end of my December TBR. And that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I know that BookTube has been raving about this and that's why I picked it up, but boy, did this book live up to the hype. Um, this is a romance story between the first son of the United States or the president's son and the one of the princes um, of the UK. This, this romance is enthralling. It keeps you on your toes. I love that it's written through multiple different uh, formats. So some of it is straight, you know, prose story. Some of it is told through emails, some of it through text messages. And I really enjoyed that because um, it is told through a third person perspective. So the only time you really get any of the main characters like thoughts or feelings, um, I don't want to say feelings. Most of their internal thoughts is through these emails or texts, which was super enjoyable. Um, I read this over the course of, a, I mean, two days. So good. So good. If you guys haven't read this, I seriously recommend that you pick this up. Um, this is I rated this five out of five stars. All right, guys, so that's everything that I read in the month of December. Let me know down below what you guys read, um, if there were any super good books that I should pick up. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Bye!